hello, hello. Good morning. Good morning, church family. Uh, it seems like just yesterday I was up here as the first intern to preach during our sermon series, The Interns. And during that time, I actually got introduced by Sawyer as Intern Johnny. <laughs> and some of you are laughing because you know that that name has stuck <laughs> throughout the entire internship. But I guess it's better than, I guess it's better than another nickname I could have gotten. Intern Johnny's not terrible. But um, uh, I'm so happy to be here with you this morning, but it is kind of a bittersweet moment. I'm happy that I get to be here standing in front of you and sharing a word, but I'm also sad because it's our last sum Sunday together. And I don't know if you're like me, but, but this summer has just flown by. It's already August. It's August 1st, which is just crazy to think about. But that being said, I'm excited to be able to be up in front of you guys this morning and sharing a, what I hope is a word of encouragement to this church here at The Crossing, and hopefully this sermon will kind of serve as a bow to the end of our time together. And that being said, I want to say a word of prayer, and then we'll get right into the message. Will you pray with me? Father God, I just wanted to say thank you so much for this church family. Thank you for sending me here. Thank you for sending Sawyer and Blake and Gabe as well. And thank you that we have been able to pour into this church and the church has been able to pour into us. And Father, please, please bless me as I, as I share the word this morning and um, be with all of those who are hearing in person and also online. It's all these things I want to pray in your heavenly name. Amen. So, the text that we will be working with this morning is out of the book of 1 Thessalonians, and we're going to be in the first chapter of this book. So this book was written by Paul with the help of Silas and Timothy to a church at a place called Thessalonica. And uh, the interesting thing about this is that we know that these people were at this church at one point. Acts 17 gives us a little snippet about Paul and Silas and Timothy's time at this place, but they were actually chased away. And so because they were chased away, they were only able to be at this church for a brief period of time. But they know that this church is still doing good things and has been a blessing to them and also to other people as well. And so that's a little bit of the background. I'm going to, ahead, I'm going to go ahead and read through verse 8, so if you will, um, starting in verse 1, uh, chapter 1. Paul, Silas, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you. We always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you, not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you welcomed the message in the midst of severe suffering, with the joy given by the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God became known everywhere. First of all, I think that this is a pretty encouraging way to start the letter. You can see that Paul, Silas, and Timothy have all of these amazing things that they wanted to say to the church. And it's crazy to me that they were there for such a short period of time, but yet they still had such a praise and such an honor for this church. And by the looks of it, this church really seems to have everything going for them. And this letter is starting to shape up to be a great job kind of letter, a you go kind of letter, a keep up the good work kind of letter. And so that being said, I wanted to model my sermon this morning based off of this passage and kind of give you guys at the crossing a way to go kind of message and a keep up the good work kind of message to serve as an encouragement for the things that you have done for us interns and also the model that you have given to us about what Christ and, and what a great church looks like. And for that, we are so thankful. 
So Paul, Silas, and Timothy, they had mentioned a couple things about what they were always thankful for to this church. And so as intern Johnny and as Sawyer and Gabe and Blake, we want to say a few things as well that we are always going to be thankful for to this church at the crossing. So first of all, we read in verse 3, and it says, We remember before our God and Father your work produced by your faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by our hope, by our hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. The first thing that Paul and Silas and Timothy will th- were thankful for was the memories that they created at this church. And that's something that we are always going to be thankful for as well, is the memories that we have made with this church, The Crossing. I can't create a whole list of all of the memories that we have created because that would be way too long. And this battery pack, I guess, only has 10 hours in it. So (laughs) I'm just just messing around. But um, as I was talking with the guys earlier this week about things that we were thankful for, uh, I remember Blake had mentioned that on the first night that we had even showed up, waiting at our host home was a gift basket with a couple things to kind of just say welcome to us. Uh, That included a surf bagel t-shirt, a Cape Water Tours and Taxi hat, a couple things of fudge and candy, as well as a couple gift cards to places in Lewis and Rehoboth, which one of those included Wawa, (laughs) uh, which none of us had ever even heard of before we came out here. (laughs) But now we are abundantly thankful that we got the opportunity (laughs) to go to Wawa. (laughs) Gas stations are never going to be the same back home. But anyway, we are so thankful that from the first night of our internship, we started creating good memories. And that's because of the thoughtfulness of this church. And those memories didn't just stop at that first night. They actually kept going. And some of the things, something else that we had talked about was uh, Gabe and Sawyer specifically had mentioned the amazing time that they were able to have serving in student ministry as the student interns. And Blake and I were involved as well, and, and we were able to, to be a blessing to the youth ministry, but, but Gabe and Sawyer especially um, remembered and recalled some of the events that we helped uh, put on for the students, such as CIY Mix for the middle schoolers, or CIY Move for the high schoolers, and those big things and those big, big events that we're going to remember for the rest of our lives. Um, not only those big things, but also some of the smaller times that we got to spend and share with the students, such as just taking them out for ice cream every now and again, or having them over at the church to just mess around and talk and play video games. And so those are just a few of the little memories and and things that we're thankful for this church and thankful that you guys have been able to to give us along the way. And so this place has become a blessing in in our hearts and a blessing in our lives so that we will always be able to look back to that one summer that we had in Delaware and think about all the good memories and all the good times that we had. And so thank you for that. The next thing that we see that they are always thankful for is that they are always thankful for the model that the church had set for them. And we see this in verse 7. It's a short but significant verse. It says, And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. This church became a model. A model so much so that other churches in the area were looking to them to see how they could become better followers of Christ. And as an intern here at this church, and as the other interns, as young college-age students who are a little bit goofy, uh, coming into this church and and immediately being accepted, um, and immediately being poured into, we will always be thankful for that model that you guys have set for us. And now I just want to get into a few of the specific things that we are especially thankful for of this church, and things that we have, have seen been modeled so well here at The Crossing. One of those things Blake mentioned to me in our time that we were talking was uh, he said that in his couple hours that he got to spend every week talking with Pastor Adam over breakfast about what small group ministry really looked like. And it was so helpful for for Blake because he felt like that one-on-one time helped him feel listened to. He got to share his thoughts with Adam and Adam got to pour into his life in an area in which Blake feels like he grew so much and now he feels much better equipped to go in to his ministry and small groups. And not only that, but I'm so thankful for Pastor Mark and the example that he set for me, uh, showing me what it looks like to, to be a senior pastor and what it looks like to preach 
And uh, isn't Pastor Mark just so awesome? Yes. And uh, I would consider him one of the best ministers that I've ever come across. And so for that, I am so thankful. But not only with that, I remember that uh, Gabe and Sawyer had brought up how thankful they were to be able to be around Austin all summer and see how Austin pours into the lives of each and every one of his students, showing them what the love of Christ is and, and being a good model of what it looks like to be a youth pastor that really cares, to be a youth pastor that makes a difference in the lives of students. And they were so excited every day to come to work and work alongside Austin and, and see what that looks like for him and what that's going to look like for them someday. But not just the staff that we were kind of working directly underneath, but uh, also you know, TJ and Sue and both of the Willigs, Cole and Don, and also uh, Don Bell. Like, we are so thankful for the staff at this church and the model that they have set for us about what a healthy church staff looks like. And I believe that this church is truly blessed because of the leadership here. Amen. I also remember talking to Sawyer, and he had mentioned that uh, he was kind of missing his family a little bit this summer. But something that helped a lot with that was that he was staying with, uh, with the Woods family. And this is a big family around here, and uh, that goes to this church. Yes, they're right in that row back there. <laughs> but uh, what he was so thankful for was that every now and often, uh, he, he was invited to go to their family get-togethers. And he felt like being invited to those family get-togethers as the only person there who wasn't actually a part of their family, but still welcomed in, uh, it just made him feel like home. And to them, they showed him such a sense of hospitality and what that truly looks like. And for that, he's so thankful. And not just him to the Woods family, but also for me, uh, staying with Mark and Angel, I'm so thankful that they opened up their home to me. And for Sawyer, excuse me, for Blake, he's so thankful for Jim and Michelle opening their, up to, their home up to him. And for uh, Gabe, uh, Michelle and Dave opening their home for him as well. And uh, little do you know, you know, they don't charge us rent to live with them. Not even for food or the utilities that we use or the rooms that we're staying in. And uh, the washing machines that we're using, which I promise some days are a lot easier for them to let us use than others because of some of the crazy things we've got into this summer. But anyway, we just wanted to say a thank you to everyone who was, able, who was willing to host us and bring us in as one of their own this summer. And so, and so the list goes on of things that we have seen modeled to us and things that this church has shown us and what, what the love of Christ and mimicking what he wants us to do as well. And I remember talking to Gabe as well. If you know Gabe, he's kind of an eater. He loves to eat. <laughs> and one of the things that he was especially thankful for this summer was all of the families that invited us into their homes and made meals for us, or all of the families that took us out uh, to go get crabs or sushi or, or any of those other things, or also the families that were willing to take some time and make meals for us and bring them to the church so that we always had something to snack on and that we never had to go hungry. In all aspects of our ministry and our experience here, we are going to be always thankful of the model that the staff, the model that the church congregation, and also the model that our host homes have showed us about what hospitality looks like and some of those smaller assets of what following Christ really looks like. And for that, we will be always thankful. And that leads us into the next thing uh, that we will be always thankful for. And this is uh, one of the things that Paul and Silas and Timothy mentioned, and this, is in, and this is in verse 8. Verse 8 tells us that the Lord's message rang out not only from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God became known everywhere. I would argue that this is probably the most important point, and that is that we are always thankful for the message. The church in Thessalonica, they understood the message, and that's why they were able to stay strong, and that's why Paul and Silas and Timothy were able to write to them and tell them just how thankful they were that they were true to the message. And this was a message that they didn't just keep to themselves, but it tells us that this message rang out to all of the surrounding area. And I think that this church at the crossing, one of the things that you guys have right is your message. 
Your message is central to Jesus, and I, and I pray that, that you always keep this central in your faith, because I think that this is the most important thing that this church in Thessalonica had going for them. I had mentioned at the beginning of this message that, that they had probably written this letter as an, as an overflow of thanksgiving and gratitude for this church, and they just had to share with them why they were so thankful But I think that Paul and Silas and Timothy, while they were at this church, had probably seen a little bit of weariness as well. And I thought that these words of encouragement, these words of thanksgiving, could give these people, these churchgoers, kind of what they needed to keep doing the right thing and continuing to be the model. And so maybe these guys had in mind the the woman that showed up every Sunday morning and helped out with the kids but never really got the recognition that she deserved and she didn't really feel seen. I think that maybe this letter could be written for her and these words of encouragement could be written for her. That what she's doing with those students isn't in vain. What she's doing with those kids isn't in vain, but it's truly making an impact. That she might not see now, she might not ever see, but it's there. Or possibly Paul has in mind the spouse that keeps faithful to the church, that keeps showing up every single Sunday, when their spouse isn't, or that same person in the audience whose family doesn't believe in Christ, and like, it's like going home as a battlefield where they have to battle for what they believe in, but yet still try to be a model of Christ and keep the message of him on the cross dying for us central. And that's hard. Maybe they were writing it for those people, or maybe they were just writing it for the people who are coming to church week in and week out, hearing the messages, hearing the words of encouragement and, and the life-changing words that were brought um, in the sermon and in the worship, sharing them at work to what seems to be deaf ears. And though they share this week in and week out, they don't really see any fruit of what they're doing, and they're starting to wonder if sharing the message is really all worth it. Maybe they were writing this letter to tell them that it is worth it, and this message is worth it to them, and to keep sharing that. I think that if this sermon could serve as just a little bit of encouragement to you all to keep doing the right thing and to keep your, your message of Christ central, then I think that that is a good thing. I'm the kind of person that loves to keep little mementos and little things of, uh, of where I've been, uh, kind of around my room or, or around different places to just remind me of how thankful I am to, from, from where I came um, and to where I am now. So to just give you a little example, I have a little pile of these mementos in my car. I'm sure you saw my car pulling into the parking lot. I call it the silver bullet. It's really fast. Um, I'm just kidding. It's a 2002 Toyota Camry. But... Uh, <laughs> I keep, a, uh, I keep a pile of these mementos in my car like a, like a little medal from a track race that I ran in high school. And that medal reminds me of the good times that I had with my friends back home and also reminds me of just how far I've come since those times in high school. I keep a little golf tee that says Cedar Rapids Country Club on it. I'm from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and I worked at that country club for a summer. And every time I see that little golf tee, I think about all the friends that I made working at that place that summer that still don't believe in Christ and still don't know the gospel or haven't accepted it into their hearts. And when I see that little memento, I'm reminded to pray for those that still haven't accepted Christ into their lives. But my favorite little memento that I keep in my car is a little silver cross. And that one means the most to me. A couple summers ago, um, I, was at, I was at my church interning for my dad, and uh, there was a baptism that was taking place. And the baptism was uh, for one of the members of our church that had been coming for a really long time, had been faithful, and he had been sharing the gospel with his brother for years and years and years. And finally, after years of working and sharing Christ with his brother, his brother finally decided that he was ready to be baptized. And so it was my dad and I and the two brothers who were there at the church while my dad baptized one of the brothers. And it was just a really special moment for me in my life. So that that little cross comes from uh, after the baptism. Uh, The brother that was a member of our church had always keep these little uh, metal crosses in his pocket, kind of as a reminder um, of keeping Christ with him. But also, if he saw someone that that needed a reminder of, of the good word of Christ, he would hand out that cross, a sort of a passing along of the message. And that morning, he gave one of those crosses to me, 
Uh, he had probably given me four or five of those crosses up to that point. But I still think of it as a really kind gesture, and, I, and I'm really thankful for that little thing that he gave me. And I, I'm especially thankful for it now because a couple days after he gave me that little cross, um, my dad actually passed away. And so that baptism that he performed was the last one that he would ever do. And so every time I look down and I see that little cross, I think about my dad's purpose on earth to baptize people, and I think about my dad's message, and I think about my message as well, and keeping that cross central. Well, about a month ago, I had taken my car through the car wash and got the outside all clean and and went to the place with the vacuums out out in the front, and I vacuumed out my entire car and got it actually smelling good and, and that kind of thing. But it was one of those where I took out everything in my car, vacuumed the whole thing, and then put everything back in. And then I left the car wash, and I was on my way back to my house when I looked at the little pile of mementos. And I, I saw the medal, and I saw the golf tee, but I didn't, I didn't see the cross. And I, I, didn't know where, I didn't know where it went. And so I start to, like, you know, check my compartments, and, and I'm looking all around places where I know that it's not going to be, just to kind of hold on to a little bit of hope that it's still there. But the more I'm looking, the more I'm just coming up with nothing left and right, and then I finally just come to the realization that I don't think I'm ever going to find it. And so I just remember sitting in my car and crying and, uh, and thinking about that little piece of my dad that I still had around that was now gone. The next morning at church, uh, the interns and I were here, and a woman came up to us and gave us a little bag. It had a wooden, it had a wooden church on it and uh, just a little note as well as a gift card uh, just kind of telling us that she appreciated us, and, and it was just a really kind gesture, and it was a sweet thing, and, and so we kind of stuffed that away, and then when I got back home later that morning, uh, I remember sitting through the bag, you know, reading the note, looking at the gift card, and then I pulled out the, uh, the wooden church that she had given us, and as I'm looking at it and seeing the back, and it says, blessings to you, July 2021, um, I look at the top, and I look at the steeple, and there is a little silver cross, exactly like the one I had lost the day before. I wanted, I mean, you can't make that stuff up. (laughs) (laughs) And I wanted to share that story with you guys. First of all, just as a reminder that those little things that you're doing might not seem like a lot to you, might not seem like a whole lot or not have an impact, but you never know what that can mean to someone. And so I'm going to encourage you this morning to keep up the good work. And not only that, but I would also encourage you and remind you to always keep the cross central in your life. I think that if we lose the cross, I think if we lose our message, then I think we've lost everything. And once we lose that, it's easy to get discouraged. It's easy to walk away. But if you are able to keep that one thing central in your life, then I think you will be able to continue to be a model of what Christ is like and to live his message out. And so for that, we will be forever thankful to this church family and forever thankful for what you guys have done for us this summer. So will you pray with me? Father God, I can't thank you enough for all the memories, for all of the ways that we have seen your son modeled to us this summer, and for ultimately your message and your sacrifice to us. God, I I pray for every single person in this room that those little things that they are doing to show that they love you and to show that they're modeling your son, remind them that it's not in vain. Remind them that that we see them. Remind them that you see them, Father. And allow them to keep doing these good works. And allow them to keep keeping your message central in their lives. Father, thank you for this time that we've had together this morning. And I I pray that that this message was a blessing to someone in this room and, and an encouragement for them to keep doing what's right. And I want to pray all of those things in your heavenly name.